Hebrews 11, we're going to read verses 24, 25, and 26. And then we're going to read Exodus chapter 10, verse 26. Amen. Say amen if you're there. By faith, Moses. Now, Hebrews 11 is called the faith chapter. You'll be, it's kind of amazing and yet fulfilling and gives us hope when you read some of the names that are there. Because you realize, what? They're in the faith chapter? I read their story. Look around the room. There's a whole lot of stories in here. But we're here. <laughs> By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused at some point. You got you to quit dabbling in the world. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing, and this is where a lot of people lose out with God because they can't make this decision. Rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You, you see, you, people don't equate Old Testament in this way, but oh yeah, 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 yeah. The types and shadows are there. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. What did Moses know about Christ? Some people just, man, I think stick around, you're gonna learn a whole lot about the Bible around this church. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches. So some of you, some of you got your treasure in the wrong place. Than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect under the recompense of the reward. Exodus chapter 10. This is where we're going to get to the fine print. And all the stuff that was going on in Israel's deliverance from Egypt. Hey, just a quick note. We stand for the reading of the Bible around here. If you're sick and ill, then don't stand. If you're just obstinate, go ahead and stay seated. Don't expect to be used around here if you don't stand for the word. Our cattle also shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind. For thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord. I don't know what God's going to require. But I'm going to have to make. I'm taking everything. Until we come thither. Lord, I feel everything I'm up against. And I'm cool with it because you're God. I pray that you move in this place like never before in Jesus name praise God you can be seated compromise compromise the word compromise does not appear in the holy scriptures Though it is common in our world vocabulary today, compromise is very familiar and common word in politics, labor, marital, parental disputes. But can we use compromise in our relationship with God? Compromise involves conceding, concessions, a sacrifice of principles. So as Christians, can we compromise the word of God? No, and 10,000 times no. Compromise involves a surrender of one's position in concession to another party. And in our case, 
The enemy is Satan. Bible has quite a few illustrations of compromise. When God told Joshua to destroy, to destroy the inhabitants of Canaan, but the uh, Gibeonites tricked Joshua. Mm -hmm. Saul was told to dis utterly destroy Amalek, but he neglected to do so. Compromise. There's a family, they bought a large ranch in Texas. Some friends decided they were going to go pay a visit, and they said, hey, where are y'all going to name the ranch? And the father said, well, I wanted to call it the Flying W, but my wife wanted to call it the Suzy Q. And then the boys wanted to call it the Bar J or the Lazy Y. So we compromised and we called it the Flying W, Suzy Q, Bar J, Lazy Y Ranch. <laughs> the friends asked, well, that's quite a name. But where's the cattle? Well, none of them survived the branding. The prophet Ezekiel makes a statement. And he talks about something we really don't like to talk about. And it's called sin. He said, behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father so also the soul of the son is mine, and the soul that sinneth, it shall die. James tells us in chapter 4, verse 17, Therefore him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The Red Sea moment is, is captured in the New Testament as a shadow of salvation that we have today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it says in verses 1 through 5, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the Red Sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. In the midst of the grandeur of the 10 plagues and the, the amazing deliverance, of the children of Israel, the mighty standoff between God's chosen and their taskmasters, the Egyptians, the, the war for good over evil, the deliverance out of bondage. It's easy to miss the fine print because nestled in there in that great story of the plagues that we can list are the terms that led to the Red Sea moment. Exodus chapter 14 Tells us, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The first compromise that Pharaoh offered was for them to stay in the land. In Exodus 8 and 25, it says, And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. <laughs> now we know God told them to leave the land. God's command was specific. God intended it to be obeyed to the full extent of every detail. Pharaoh's compromise was to allow only a partial fulfillment of the will of God. God's command specifically required that Israel be separated from Egypt by a three-day journey. Why three days? Well, I don't know. Maybe because it was parallel with the resurrection after three days. Today, God is still requiring the same separation. And Luke, it tells us in, in chapter 5, verse 4, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. What's he saying? 
you've got to get as far from the world and that place of sin as possible if you're ever going to get into the deep things of God. If you're really going to cut ties, if you're really going to get past this, this superficial temporal, you're going to have to push yourself into the deep things of God. You've you got to beware of compromise and trying to straddle the fence or skirt the edge. Launch out in the deep of divine strength. Launch out into the deep of God's infinite love. Launch into that place of faithfulness and blessings that only uncompromised commitment finds. There are too many people that are satisfied with a shallow experience. The only association they really have with God is maybe they own a Bible or they call themselves a Christian. James said, I'll show you my faith by my works. In other words, I'm going to change my behavior. So many miss out on the greater things in God simply because of not obeying his word. They're still repeating what Eve said. Hath God said, is that really what it says? If you read your Bible, you can find out what it says. Now listen, the Bible is of no private interpretation. Here's a phrase for you. Scripture defines Scripture. I just took to you my text and I showed you in the Old Testament and it reiterated in the New Testament and vice versa. Because there's harmony to Scripture. You can't take one and pull it out and make a religion around it. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He said that. If you want to try to make three out of them, you go ahead. He's still one, but he can do multiple things in multiple ways. For Israel to have sacrificed in Egypt, it would have caused a serious problem because the Egyptians believe animals are sacred. Not to mention it would simply be disobedience. Moses would not accept any compromise. Because God demands 100% obedience. Now remember, that, that, that's, oh, that's so hard. Really 100%? Yes, because 100% obedience equals 100% deliverance. Some of you are fighting with some things. Why? You haven't, you haven't obeyed 100%. That's why you still have a few. Those, you know what they are. You know what they are. That nagging this and that nagging that. Let me tell you what, the greatest marriage counseling book you're going to find is right here. The greatest book on how to be a, how to be a great employee is right there. You want to know how to be a, a good son, a good daughter? It's right there. You want to know how to be a good Christian? It's right there. You want to know? Hey, it's all right there. So politically, the Israelites were slaves to Egypt. But religiously, they needed to be free completely free, not partially free. If they would have been given freedom of religion in Egypt, it would not have made a difference. The average person today feels that all religion is good as long as one is sincere. It sounds good and fuzzy, right? But what happens to those that are sincerely wrong? It's only by uncompromising faith that we can prove otherwise. People today prefer compromise. A little bit of religion, a little bit of the world, and it's okay to have a little bit of sin. Come on. Are you judging me? You're not perfect. The devil wants us a compromised, watered-down religion. The last thing he wants you to do is to launch out into the deep, away from a compromising, watered-down religion, away from mediocre Christianity into a, a true church with true worship which requires dedication and uncompromising faith that really seeks to have a separation from sin. Mm. The second compromise that Pharaoh submitted to them, hidden nestled between the 10 plagues, is in is Exodus 8 and 28. Okay, if you're going to go, And Pharaoh said, I'll let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. Go read it. You know, Moses, you know, I get it. You're coming to church now. But instead of going that far away, why don't you just, just, just 
go just a little way. Or so. Let's go about a mile or so, just over the board. Sounds good, right? There's separation. There's definitely a distance place there. You're, you're on the other side there, but, you know, there's no Egyptians there. But did Moses accept this? No. Nope. Because that's not what God commanded of him. You see, it's not about serving God to please you. Well, you got to serve God to please him. Pharaoh was afraid that once outside the land, they might try to escape to Canaan. And he wanted to keep a close eye on them so he could bring them back whenever he wanted to. Listen to this. Whatever it is, the enemy has no intention of really letting you leave. He can control your emotions up and down, sideways. Up. Some of you are controlled by simple and simple as a leaf, a chemical, anger, an attitude, a culture of a world that's grabbed you. Let me ask you this. That thing that you hold on to so much for to not get you all the way in church, does it love you? Will it come to your aid when you're sick? On when you're breathing your last breath, is whatever that thing that you're holding on to that's keeping you from that close walk up, is it going to run and go, I got you? It blows my mind. Some of you, now, and I don't really mean this, but I mean this. Some of you need a close brush with death to realize how close it really is. To realize, hey, this world ain't all like it trumps out to be. There's all this stuff that's going on and all this stuff. Well, I'm a, I'm a breath away. Well, I tell you what, I want a good, good, good close walk with God. I kind of want to make sure I'm on the right terms with it. You know, no, Pharaoh sounds good and he's got a lot to offer. I really don't want conflict. I don't like conflict. But I have found that the more peace I have with the world, the greater conflict I have with God. The greater peace I have. I struggle with prayer when I'm playing in the world. I have a problem with pastor and even standing for the reading of the word because it grates against who I am. You better start worrying about what grates against who he is. The enemy has no intention of letting you go. And whatever it is that he's got that hook in you, and trust me, it's a hook. He's like that drug dealer. He'll give you the first one for free. Maybe the second one, he's got that hook in you. See, he knows that God resists pride, so he's going to help build it up in you. I ain't got to stand when you ask me to. No, you don't. I don't got to go to that church. I don't. No, you don't. No. You got your own way to serve God. You don't need a Bible. You don't need a pastor. You don't need any, any authority over you whatsoever. You, you're your own divine soul, and you'll let God know what you're going to do. And when you get to heaven, you can straighten out his... The devil is playing with you like a cat does a mouse. But Moses rejected it because it was not what God commanded. That line of separation was too close, too near, too, too close to the world. It was too, too, too limited, and it was too close to the leeks and the flesh pots. That temptation to go back would always be there. It's according to the legend of the Spanish conquistador, Hermes Cortez. He, he issued a rather interesting order when he told his men, we're burning the ships. you got to make the decision. There's no going back. I'm going forward and we're going to fight to the end. There's got to be something about us when we finally decide, I'm getting out of Egypt. I'm, I'm getting out of the world. I'm, I'm going to get into the church. There ain't no going back. I, I got to cut ties. and I just can't go a little way. I've got to burn those ships. Now we'll get where some of you live a little bit. I have found those people that hold on to all those valuable things from their past. Oh, but my record collection. Oh, but this, but that, it's, it's who I was. If you hold on to it, it's who you still are. You have to understand, after conversion, we have to launch out in the deep. You can't play. Once you get baptized, you got to maintain a bold testimony that I want nothing to do. I don't want to listen to the stuff of the world. I don't want to watch the stuff. See, the problem with some of us, 
is, is, well, I got mine. I'm okay with it. But everybody else, you need to get away from you, what you used to do. <laughs> and if, uh, ain't nothing more hypocritical than someone say, well, my stuff ain't as bad. My genre of music isn't as bad as what yours was. Some of you deceived yourself. Burn the bridges. I'm not returning to that one. I don't need to keep that. I, I don't need to bring that up. I don't want to conjure up those feelings and those ideas. How can I have the mind of Christ if I'm playing all that old stuff that was dragging me to hell? Burn those bridges so I can go to a place with God. I want to get into the deep things of God. I'm tired of being that superficial Christian that I'm touchy all the time and angry all the time and I can't be counted on. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not really even an integral part of the church because, well, I just don't know. I got to cut ties to all that is Egypt. I got to cut ties to all that's worldly. If not, it's going to drag me back. Numbers 11 tells us, we remember the, the fish that we had and did eat in Egypt freely. The cucumber, did you hear that? They said freely. Was it free? We can still see the pyramids today. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. And listen to this. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. My God, I walked away from all the clubbing and the party and my music and all the honky tonks and all this and all that for the church. All I got is the church. All I got is manna from heaven. Is That's all I get. You can't tell me we don't think like that. Our flesh gets like that. Hey, See, I, I'm one of those pastors that... I don't walk off the ground this far. I'm, I, I still walk in shoe leather. I've not found that 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 whatever that some people like think. Well, you don't have that fight or wrestle. I still fight in my flesh and fight in my mind and fight because I realize I cannot allow Egypt to call me back. I can't allow those things. And I get. I know some. Well, I can. I can do. And you can listen to that music. I can't. When you get converted, I remember it. It may not be important to you, but I went home and I smashed all my liquor bottles and threw them away. And I grabbed album after stacks of albums of records that I and I threw them in the trash. I flushed the drugs. I threw away the paraphernalia. Got it out of my life. The reason some of you never went forward is because there's too much time. Oh, yeah, I didn't go back to that, but you're tied to it. And God could never let you go any further until you cut those strings. You see, I had to get rid of them to make room for the new. I got to make room for the new. I wanted to make sure that I got rid of everything I could so God can fill it up with something else. All oh, some of you need to realize if you'll get rid of that junk, man, maybe it's time to Make room for new. Maybe you need to burn the porn. Maybe it's time to go get it out of your computer. Get it off your phone. Do your part. God will do his. If you want God to deliver you from all that, cut your ties to it and watch what he can do. Don't keep it around so that the devil can use it as a tool against you. That moment, that weak moment when it's a down day, and instead of listening to something uplifting and spiritual, you go click on that old radio station and you drive around in your old spiritual mully grubs. Husband didn't talk to you right, or your wife didn't make your toast right, you walk. Walk around, listen to that worldly junk all day, trying to reaffirm some worldly self-esteem that you're. Whatever happened to a loud profession that asked for me and my house? We will serve the Lord. Where, where are the men that will stand up and be able to stand up in front of their wives and say, we ain't having that worldly music in here. And we're not watching that kind of stuff. And we aren't going to go to church. And we're going to pray when it's time to pray. We're going to fast when it's time to fast. I tell you what, if you get busy doing that, all the little idiosyncrasies that we don't agree on won't mean a hill of beans. 
You're more agreement with the devil that wants to drag you to hell than a church trying to get you to heaven. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Make the gap between you and your former life as great as possible. Sometimes you're just going to have to part ways with things. They're not even sin. They just lead to something you don't want to be anymore. Giving yourself time to grow, to build that resistance to that temptation before it takes you back into the world to so that you can fulfill the Great Commission. Borderline Christians. That's what you wanted them to be. Just go to the border. Romans 13, 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. See, it's not even, a, it doesn't have to be sin. If you're making provision, oh yeah, you coddle the albums and coddle that music and, and coddle this and you coddle that and it's tucked away and it's got, you got your own special room for it or you got the, I don't know. You fill in those blanks. Hey, you have to understand, I, when, I, when I was in the world and had little things, like that reassuring cap. You know, Okay, it's still there. Smoke, smoke that later. Some of you don't know about that. Some of you do. Some of you got that little, that reassuring attachment to the world. Well, well, it makes me feel good. Yeah. Making provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Did you hear that? Any of that old lifestyle that you allowed to remain is provision for your downfall. Just because it didn't happen yet. Just because maybe it hasn't been a big issue yet. Maybe it's not about that it didn't take you down, but it kept you from where you could have been. When? Maybe you couldn't do in God what you could have done in God because you was too tied to the past. To follow Christ and then return to the world is a terrible thing. Satan is well pleased with borderline. You ought to think about that. Aren't we to please God? I wonder how happy Satan is when we hold on to that junk. Maybe we hold on to an attitude or an offense. Forgiveness is a tenet of Christianity, but you hold on to stuff you think you're right because you were done wrong, so that makes you right to have been you're wrong. Amen? Only you know if you're a borderline Christian. And so I can only give you some advice. Rebuke Satan. Yeah. Quit compromising. Take whatever it is and tell Satan everything in the box to the left. You can take it with you. That's right. That's right. And all some of you girls know what I'm talking about. You ain't nothing but a player. You get your stuff and go. I ain't compromising. Uh-uh. Father, you ain't sticking around here. You're out. I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm done with you. I want to launch out into the deep things of God. I'm tired of being a, a peripheral Christian. I'm tired of being a shallow. I'm tired of being one that, that, that doesn't really know what God's doing and what he's saying because I'm not spiritually into I want to launch into the deep things of God. I want to be used in these last days. I, I don't want to be some baggage someone's got to drag her. I want to be involved in what he's doing. He promised to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. I want to be a part of that. He's promised to redeem and to save and to heal. I want to be a part of that. Because it, it scares me. It bothers me. It worries me. Because the word lets us know how God reacts to those borderline lukewarm individuals. He says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I, I would that thou weren't cold nor haughty. He just gets disgusted. So send them because thou art lukewarm. I neither cold nor hot. I spew thee out of my mouth. Oh, God, I don't want, I don't want to be straddling the fence. I, I don't want to have more, more. Oh, Jesus, help me. That third compromise of Pharaoh. You know what he said? Okay, the men can go. And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh, and he said unto them, Go serve the Lord your God. 
me, who are they that shall go? And Moses said, we will go with our young and with our old and with our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our herds. We will go for we must hold a feast unto the Lord. And he said, let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones look for it for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men. The men can go. Serve the Lord. Because Pharaoh knew that if the men went a full three days into the wilderness, they'll come back with their wives. They're going to come back with their children. They're going to come right back into slavery. Just like the devil doesn't mind if you go to church. Just as long as when you come home and serve him. Just as long as you come to church and put on the tenets of Christianity and fulfill your obligation, but when you leave here, you're going to take care of all Satan's bidding. You're going to coddle whatever that is and, and, and do this and do that. The, the devil doesn't mind the divided heart. Did you hear what I said? The devil doesn't mind the divided heart. A cheater don't mind another cheater. A compromiser will understand another compromiser. But a non-compromising God will not understand a compromising saint. Cheaters are okay with compromise. The devil will play second fiddle for one hour a week until as long as he gets the other 167 hours. Come on to church. He's cool. You go on and go there, but I tell you, I see you when you get back home. I see before you even get back home, you'll get in there and turn that back on and listen to your whatever. He says, I, I, cause I, I, I don't mind you going and flirting with God because I know I got your heart. But Moses said, wives and children too. Here's a subtle compromise for you. It's a spirit, spiritual oxymoronic. And parents claim to serve the Lord, but they don't include their children. Children are a gift, a precious gift. Men in the wilderness while their children are in Egypt. Can one serve both? No. Acts 16, 31 says, And they said, Believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. It's for our children. Acts chapter 2, 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Parents, let's not just get the young people to the church house once a week, but can we get them out of Egypt? Can we make sure Egypt isn't engulfing the house? I don't know if I could share this or not. I don't want you all to get mad at me, and I definitely don't want to defame my mom or my dad. Love them. Good parents. It's funny, it's humorous, but it's not. When I was a young man, back in the days of Heather Locklear and all that kind of stuff, and Motley Crue and I had all the posters. But if you ever open, uh, came in my room and pulled the door back to look what was behind the door, there's going to be a ridiculous poster that did not go with all the ones I had. My dad had a poster in my room. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd, which nobody did, the way my door opened, my door opened just like this, went right against the wall. And every now and then, pops would come in and shut the door and turn around and look at that old country music western star, Dolly Parton, sitting on some hay looking all coy. Get that <laughs> smile on his face and go,
relax. But he did that in front of his son. He compromised. Now, I don't want to go that direction with my parents. I just want to show how easy and how simple it is for an enemy to get the door, a foot in the door of your life. And we got to just get some people. We got to get our children. We got to get our families. We got to get our husbands. We got to get our wives out of Egypt. We're running around with masks. We're running around with gloves. We're running around with hand cleaner from one little tiny germ that we can. We're freaking out. But yeah, we got all kinds of stuff running around our life that will drag us straight to hell. And you're worried about a flu. You'll wear a mask. You don't want to get a flu, but you, you got a whole bunch of music stashed here. You got this over there. You got that over there. And you're like, well, it's me. It's me. Well, but don't think that God doesn't know what's going on in the world. And he's watching someone. Like, I don't know about you. I don't want to get the flu. That's common sense. But I don't want to go to hell either over some little thing that gets into my life that I, I'm a, I become a protector and a defender of an unclean spirit. I'll be more judgmental of my brother and my sister than I am of the things that I allow in my life. I got to get away from the, being a borderline Christian. I need to get away from just thinking about, man, it, it doesn't matter what I do. It affects everybody around you what you do, especially if you're in leadership. I got to get out, get out beyond Egypt. To get close to Jesus. You got to beware of the compromise of just sending one delegate to church or a prayer meeting. I'm not feeling good, honey. You go. You, you, you stand in for us. You stand in. Take the whole family. Claim the whole family. Church is the ultimate family activity. Oh, yeah, it's, it's very, oh, but we got something for kids. We got something for old folks. We got something for the most in between. There ain't nothing greater than a church to get involved in, I'm telling you. Moses made sure everyone must go. Joshua said, as for me and my house, everybody, Jesus came for the sins of the whole world. Why would we become exclusive? Why I'm going to go to church while you guys stay here. Wait a minute, we're all going. The fourth compromise, and I know I need to hurry. Okay. Pharaoh called Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds be stayed, and let your little ones also go with you. This is the one that gets serious. This is the one that gets where you live. And Moses says, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may, we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle shall go with us. There shall not a hoof be left behind. He's getting serious now because he realized this is where the little compromises get people. For thereof must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not what we must serve the Lord until we can. In other words, I can't leave you nothing. Everything that I am and I have belongs to God. The minute I start separating things out, say, okay, the enemy can have this. Oh, the enemy can go ahead and have this little corner of my house here or the little corner of my mind or my heart or that little thing that you hold on to. Understand that the flocks and the cattle represented their livelihood. It represented their finances. It represented their sustenance, their food, their jobs, their income, their sacrifice. Could you really serve God and yet leave everything about your sustenance to the Moses didn't accept this offer either. Even though it sounded better than the last one, well, that's okay. I got me and my family to church, but you better leave my finances out of it. I got my family to church, but don't expect me to get involved. Oh, I got my family to church, but I don't need to really obey what the scripture says. Sounds better than the last one. Everybody can go. Everybody can go to the three days. And everybody can go to the very spot that God wanted them to go, but not your substance. No, Moses rejected it. Moses rejected it because it was still an incomplete obedience. 
It was compromise. How could they worship without a sacrifice? How can you worship God without giving him your own? That's impossible. Unconditional worship. How can we worship without presenting our possessions to give him as he requires? For where your treasure is, there your heart is. We can fudge it. We can, we, 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 we can smooth it and glaze it and act like, let me tell you what nobody talks about when it comes to sin. Oh, we talk about bad language and we talk about watching movies and we talk about all this other junk. You know what nobody talks about? Greed. Because you can hide that one. Oh, you, you, you oh, I'm, I'm, I'm thrifty. I'm a good steward. Greed. The devil's like, hey, listen, let me just get that little greedy spot in you where you make sure you always have this. But the church is missing this. Church is missing. Church, uh -uh, I'm, uh -uh, we're good. God told them to bring everything. God demands everything unconditionally. All that we have, husbands, wives, children, possessions, there is to be no compromise. We cannot bargain with God. Isn't it sad we'll bargain with God and go on in with the devil? We'll bargain and fight. We'll, 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 we'll go to the lowest common denominator to, to, to the things of God. Oh, bless God. We're all in with this other stuff. Isn't that funny how that works? Yes. Yes. I thank God Jesus is worthy of my everything. Yes. I like the fact that the way Moses said it, he kind of got, he kind of got down and dirty. Not one hook is not not one hook, the, 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 the least usable part on a on a cow. You're, we're not leaving a cow's foot here. We're, you're not going to see a footprint of anything that I've had in your side, devil. Anything and everything. We're all going to serve the Lord. Now, now I know, I know that I'm right in there, and some of you, your balances, your checking account is just, just, just like a Rolodex in your mind. If you have to stop and think about it, it's because things probably don't add up. Because we're told to serve him with our mind, our strength, our heart, our soul, our body, our possessions, and our time. And not just what's left of these things, but the best of these things. I know. But you have to, you have to stop and realize what we're up against. And I'm thankful that we can sit here and look at Moses and look at what he's doing. And we can analyze and let's, let's pick on what he did. But understand in conclusion this morning that the subtleness of Satan is found in compromise. He sought to keep Israel in the land. He sought to keep Israel close. He sought to divide it. Husbands, you go lead the women in division. He sought to send them forth empty handed without the ability to truly serve the Lord. But Moses said, no compromise, not one hoof, no compromise. As for me and my house, we're all getting out of Egypt. When Moses refused to accept those four compromises. He held out for 100% obedience, which was finally granted. He got it. If you will fight for it, you will get it. If you hold out for it, you will get it. If you will stand still and see the salvation of God and the obedience to his word, you can. If you will be 100% obedient, you can get 100% deliverance. Do you want 100% deliverance? Do you really want delivered from that struggle? Do you want delivered from that thing that keeps your family down? Are you tired of being second fiddle? Are you tired of not being able to reach the heights? I'm telling you, not one hook and you'll be delivered. Not one hook and you can make it out. Not one hook and watch your children blossom. It's time that your choice cost the enemy instead of it costing you. Moses refused. 
when he stood his ground. The plagues finally reached right into Pharaoh's house and took his most precious item, the firstborn. When Paul was converted, he made a clean break. Paul wasn't just Paul because he was Paul. Paul was Paul because of the choices that he made. Some of us need to be just downright honest with where we are at in God and why we may be not doing what we think we probably could in God. It's merely not about just going forward, but about what's cutting the strings to the things that are holding us back. The key to spiritual power is cutting ties with carnality. It may not be sin. It may not be something that you think is bad, but it doesn't lead that way. It leads that way. It's not leading to a closer walk with God. It's keeping you in the carnal things of life. Separation from the world is an indispensable quality in true service for Christ. Sacrifice don't make sense to the uncommitted. Can a Christian compromise? Well, according to James, the answer is no. Because compromising is sacrificing principles. It's funny, the most principled people have that little secret compromise. James 1.27 speaks of pure religion. See, religion's not bad. Pure religion's not bad, but compromise. Pure religion undefiled. Pure, not mixed. Not watered down. No compromise. Unspotted. Unspotted. I'll never forget years ago, my way driving to work, I was listening to a radio show. He was talking about his his children, and how they were starting to want mom and dad to compromise, a church-going family, and the son and the daughter was talking about letting this, letting this, and so the dad decided, okay, let's just go and see if they really believe this. So according to a story, that day, he made some brownies. When the kids came home, he set the brownies on the table and he said, I want you guys to sit down. They were excited seeing the gallon of milk there and the brownies on the table. And he said, I'm going to serve you these brownies. But I tell you, the only difference between these brownies and all the brownies we've ever made before is I went out into the yard. And you know our little dog, Fifi? He said, I went out in the yard and I just grabbed one small little Fifi deposit and I added it to the mix. Just, just a very small one. Serve yourself. Needless to say, they didn't eat it. Isn't it funny, the things we do swallow? I wonder. And I, you know what? Listen, I don't want you to feel bad. You want this, this class today so you can pass this test tomorrow. It's time to say, you know what? I, I gotta get some spots out of my life. Is there, is there some spots in your life that need to be cleaned up? You know, I was talking to someone the other day about vehicles. When you go to buy a vehicle, it's the best thing since sliced bread. They're gonna tell you everything about it, and if there's a little nick here, nick, oh, that's nothing, man, this thing's got a great running gear. You got. When you're buying, it's the best. But you ever realize what happens when you're selling? They're going to look at that little tiny, oh, no, that, that knocks, I lost $1,000 off this guy. You got to stop and think of which way you're going and how much that spot really means. Mm, maybe that didn't make sense to you. Is that thing, that, is that thing really worth what it's costing you spiritually? Is it, is it really worth it? I wonder, who shall separate us from the love of God? 
tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And that, that, that don't sound like fun to me. But this next part talks about something the world doesn't understand. Something that my flesh doesn't understand. My, my flesh doesn't mind sinning because it's not going to pay the price for it. My soul is. Your, your, your flesh don't mind listening to that and doing that because deep down, it doesn't care if when you walk into the house of God, you're really good spiritually or not. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Does that thing that you put your foot down to God, you're not getting that one. And Paul goes on to say, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I wonder today, I wonder right now. Let's stand. The Bible makes this incredible statement Jesus is speaking, and he literally goes to a level that most of us are not going to be comfortable with. He literally says, it is better to enter into life or go, die and go to heaven maimed. If thy eye offend thee, it is literally better to pluck it out and go without it than where it's going to drag you. Wow. What is it? What is it that's causing you to be lame? What is it that's keeping you? It's not for me to decide. It's, it's for you. It's for you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's for you to know what this word says. It's for you to realize and, and be honest in your own self that anybody here. It's uncomfortable, I know, and I'm sorry. But an, you can't make an honest decision without an honest discussion. Can, can we be honest this morning? Can, can, we, can we be honest with the Word of God? Can we be honest with the Spirit of God in His presence? And go, you know, and I get it. If you're good, you're good. But I wonder if there's some here, you know, I just want to go lay this down and give this to God today because I want to get closer to him. And whatever this thing is, it's not going to impede me 